17 days after the initial explosion, thousands of miners are summoned to Chernobyl from across the Soviet Union. Their mission? To approach the reactor through what is now the only possible path, underground. Our mission was this, dig a 150 meter tunnel from the third blurb to the fourth, a tunnel 30 meters long, then dig a room 30 meters long and 30 meters wide to hold a refrigeration device for cooling down the reactor. In one month, 10,000 miners from Russia and the mining regions of the Ukraine are sent down into the tunnel. They're between 20 and 30 years old. Inside the tunnel, which has no ventilation, the temperature hits 120 degrees, and radioactivity is at a minimum of one rungeon per hour. We worked without any protective gear. The miners couldn't use masks because the filters would get damp after a few minutes. So everyone just took them off and kept on working without them, with our shirts off too. We drank water out of open bottles, which was really bad because the radioactive particles were ingested right into our body. The hardest thing was the lack of oxygen and the incredible heat. It was hot, hot, hot. And we had to work really fast. At a crazy pace, faster and faster. Battalions of 30 miners will leave each other every three hours, 24 hours a day. In just over a month, they dig a 500-foot tunnel, a job that in a mine would have normally taken three months. The most dangerous places were not underground. There wasn't as much radiation below the reactor. But as soon as we came up, we had to run even faster. Radioactivity at the mouth of the tunnel is 300 times higher. Not a single miner is spared from exposure. Not once are they informed of the real dangers they are facing. Someone had to go and do it. Us or someone else. We did our duty. The miners accomplished their mission. But the cooling system is never set up below the reactor. The underground room is finally filled with cement to solidify the structure. The official position is that each miner received 30 to 60 runtions. But survivors claim they received up to five times that amount. It is estimated that a fourth of these men died before the age of 40. 2,500 lives lost that don't appear in any official statistic. The fire at Chernobyl is now being kept in check but the breach and tons of highly radioactive rubble lie exposed to the elements. It is urgent to cover the broken structure and clean up the zone. But for that, more men will be needed. Many more men. Eighteen days after the disaster, Gorbachev finally addresses the Soviet people, launching a massive campaign in response to the emergency. The entire country was mobilized. No bureaucratic formalities. If someone had what we needed, we took it. No formalities. We'd worry about the cost later. We took whatever we needed. It was a frontline situation. General Nikolai Tarakanov is sent to command the land troops. In one year, a hundred thousand soldiers and officers passed through Chernobyl. They were all reservists. They were summoned up by top administration in their cities and sent to the front. 
и отправляли на Чернобыль. Military personnel or civilians, officers or simple soldiers, all of them are liquidators. A term invented for the Battle of Chernobyl. Their mission, clean up, liquidate the radioactivity. Igor Kostin was one of five war reporters authorized by the Kremlin to cover the battle. A first in a country that kept everything hidden. Three of his colleagues are now dead. There were no titles, no ministers, generals or soldiers. No one was saying, I'm a general, do what I say. Everyone was honestly doing what they could. And so the operation named the liquidation of the Chernobyl accident was set in motion. 100,000 troops, as well as 400,000 civilians, workers, engineers, nurses, doctors and scientists from every Soviet republic passed through Chernobyl. The Soviet Union is waging its last major battle. 500,000 people. The troops in Chernobyl were bigger than Napoleon's. But our army got contaminated. From the sky, helicopters drop tons of a sticky liquid dubbed Berber, a mixture that coagulates and plasters the radioactive dust to the ground. Meanwhile, brigades of liquidators are put in charge of cleaning up the zone and house by house, removing the layer of radioactive dust that covers everything. The last villages with people still remaining in the zone are evacuated. The houses are knocked down one by one and buried. Around the plant, a colossal operation is set in motion. It goes on seven days a week without a single day off. 400,000 cubic yards of contaminated earth are bulldozed into huge ditches and covered over with cement. This spot around the fourth reactor is where the most dangerous missions of the zone took place. Eight weeks after the explosion, the liquidators tackle the heart of the problem. In order to neutralize the toxic waste for the long term and prevent it from spreading even more, the entire blown out reactor has to be isolated. Lev Bakarov was one of the engineers who designed the enormous structure that would entirely cover the fourth reactor. A sarcophagus of steel and concrete, more than 550 feet long and 215 feet tall. It was one of a kind, a unique project. No one had ever built such a structure in a zone this radioactive. You could only work a few minutes at a time. That had never been done before. It is an enormous challenge. How do you build a monumental structure in a place where humans can work for only a few minutes or even just seconds at a time. This utterly new situation will require more improvisation from the liquidators and put more lives at risk.